a 10-day-old baby with club feet. The feet were in severe adduction, varus, and equinus. There was a deep crease above the heel and one across the sole of the foot. All metatarsals were in plantar flexion. The adduction of the metatarsals and the heel varus were partially corrected by abducting the foot with counter pressure applied on the lateral side of the calcaneus rather than on the head of the talus. A grave error. When the third cast was removed, a small fold of the skin over the base of the toes indicates that the foot slipped up inside the cast. In the fourth cast, the foot slipped up further, folding and damaging the skin, and caused the cavus to increase. The foot is now in line with the leg and will easily slip up. Manipulations to improve the cavus failed. A tendochilus tenotomy at two months of age did not prevent the foot from slipping up inside the cast. The skin damage and the cavus increased. The foot was stunted. After the second percutaneous tendochilus tenotomy at four months of age, the foot could be dorsiflexed, but the hind foot was in severe valgus and the forefoot hyperabducted. A grotesque deformity ensued. The X-rays show the metatarsals in severe plantar flexion, the hind foot in equinus, and the toes extended. The metatarsals are in severe abduction at the least frank line. The telocalcaneal angle is very wide. On her first visit to our clinic at five months of age, the feet were a stubby, swollen, hyperabducted, and the big toes were short. There was some cavus and equinus and a skin crease on the lateral border of the foot and across the sole. One week later, when our first cast was removed, the swelling had decreased. The feet appeared to have increased in length because the cavus and the forefoot hyperabduction had improved. The feet could be dorsiflex 5 degrees. The hind foot was a sprain in valgus. The medial ankle ligaments and the tendons of the posterior tibial and toe flexors were overstretched. With the heel varus corrected, a second plaster cast was applied using a posterior plaster splint over the calf, heel and sole, reinforced by a well-molded plaster bandage. The cables and the equinos were corrected simultaneously by pushing with my thumbs under the metatarsals while an assistant stabilized the knee in flexion. With my fingers, I molded the plaster cast over the ankle. To prevent the cast from slipping, the knee was immobilized in 110 degrees of flexion by applying a plaster splint in front of the knee, reinforced with a plaster bandage around the thigh thus avoiding excessive plaster behind the severely bent knee. When dorsiflexing the foot, the orthopedist must see the toes. They often blanch from ischemia, but the blood returns when the pressure is decreased and the plaster sets. The cast held the feet straight in 5 degrees of dorsiflexion. After two more casts changed weekly, she wore a pre-molded foot abduction orthosis with the shoes in 30 degrees of hour rotation, 20 hours a day. At eight months of age, the feet, still stubby, appeared straight, although the metatarsals remain slightly hyperabducted, probably due to the contracted quadratus plantae. The heel were in 5 degrees of valgus. The range of motion in all joints was within normal limits. At 13 months of age, Sierra stands up on feet plantigrade. The range of motion of the tarsal joints is normal and has 15 degrees of foot dorsiflexion. She walked at 14 months.